Hello everyone, Crydax here and welcome back to our compact, clean, and tileable blueprint series. Today we are finishing the early game section, aka the Mark 1 blueprint designer section, with packagers. Once you've got packagers going, you should have pretty much everything you need to get to your Mark 2 blueprint designers. I know technically manufacturers show up before then, but you can always just handcraft a few of the items you need to get the Mark 2 blueprint designer and then you can make manufacturers in that build, which manufacturers will be our first uh, thing to build in the Mark II Blueprint Designer. But yeah, let's go over how to build packagers today. We'll go ahead and clear this. And I tried so hard to make a version with eight packagers and it just doesn't work. I'm sure with some jank or putting some of them up elevated, you can do it, but I don't think it's worth it because you can just put two of these next to each other and connect the in to the out like we've shown in previous videos rather than doing a straight line of eight you can do a set of four and then rotate the other one 180 and do a set of four and then the inputs just wrap around and go in so it's really not that bad and i just i just recommend doing it that way so we're just going to do a setup for four and they do need to be all the way up against the edge because like constructors they are exactly one foundation wide so you can see here we're using up all of our space. And thankfully everything fits pretty well with these. There is a smidgen of clipping with the mergers and splitters onto the pipe. And as usual, if you don't like that, that's totally fine. For me, it's an acceptable level of clipping. It doesn't look that bad to me and it feels like, I don't know, it feels like when belts are sitting on top of pipes that just feels right. Even if there's a little bit of clipping, that doesn't feel like I'm cheesing the game or something. So. I personally don't mind it, but if you don't like it, then feel free to make the belt one, you know, you can have the belt up here instead, and then it won't clip at all. So that's totally up to you. Now, one thing that is important is the pipeline should be at the same level as the inputs here, and that makes things really simple. You don't need any noodling. It's just super easy. You connect the pipeline, you get your junctions. I mean, this really couldn't be easier. This might be one of the easiest builds there is. Um, because look at that, uh, it's so easy. Now, you do have to, you know, go a little finicky with these. Um, I usually start with the junction, and then you can connect it over to the building pretty easy. But yeah, you just connect up your pipelines, and I usually connect up the pipes first, because sometimes they can get a little weird if you don't connect them first. And then we'll go over how to do the belts here in a moment, but I'm gonna finish out with the pipes. Now, I didn't mention like, how do you know the placement of these? It's just in front of the back of the conveyor inputs and outputs. Like there should be a gap between looking at the side of your stackable and the, the side of your inputs and same with the outputs. If you don't leave a gap, you can't connect the fluids properly. So you have to, so like this wouldn't work. You actually have to go all the way in front of the building so that there's a gap here. And then we do the same on this side so that we can get a connection going. And I'm building pipeline Mark 1s. At this point, you might have Mark 2s because I think Mark 2s just need plastic and copper sheets, if I'm remembering correctly. So uh, it's up to you whether you build it with pipeline Mark 1 or Mark 2. It's easy enough to make a version with Mark 2 or just upgrade this version. Do note that if you are upgrading the Mark 1 version to the Mark 2, you have to be careful to make sure you upgrade all these little stubby uh, pipe segments, otherwise you're going to have some bad times. I know that if it was a belt, it wouldn't matter, right? Because if each building's not using more than 300 fluid, then it shouldn't matter, but I found that with pipes, you really want the whole network to be Mark 2 if you're dealing with Mark 2. There can be weirdnesses. Um, if there's a Mark 1 connected to Mark 2s. So I highly recommend upgrade every single pipe in the network to, to Mark 2 unless you really know what you're doing, which even though I know quite a bit, I wouldn't classify myself as really knowing what I'm doing. So I definitely just go with the, um, what you call I just go with the Mark 2 everywhere strategy. And for this one, I'm gonna use Mark IV because we are using packagers which require plastic and rubber. And at that point, you're certainly going to have uh, Mark IV belts. So forget Mark III, let's just do Mark IV here. And as usual, I'm coming in from the left, the back left, and then I'm going out to the front left with my belts. But again, you can change that direction. 
It's it's always interesting when I receive comments that are kind of negative. Like, you should have mirrored versions. It's like, okay, so make mirrored versions. Like that, I'm not here trying to provide an exhaustive guide to every possible thing you might want to do in the game. I'm just trying to provide a clean, compact, and tileable blueprint for you. And if you like it, then you can easily make mirrored versions yourself. That's kind of the point of this series. I do provide the download links, um, but I, I personally think that you're better off building it yourself um, as far as gameplay stuff. So the download links are more of a concession than something I love the idea of. So anyway, I digress. Uh, how far out do you build the belt to get around the pipe? It's three little, three little ticks. So you go out one, two, and three so that it's not under the middle of the pipe, but kind of under the back of the pipe. And this is where you start to see some clipping, right? Like there's a little bit of clipping with the junction and the belt, and then it's about to get a bit worse. So this is where I totally understand if you don't like the clipping. Um, also, we need our dummy lift. Oops. Dummy lift to get the splitter snapping correctly. Actually, I'm just gonna build all of them because it'll be easier once I'm up there. So you got one, two, three from basically zero out. One, two, three. One, two, three. And if you've been watching my series, you know that I don't like these poles sitting here. Maybe I should, because it maybe it's kind of realistic, something to hold up all that weight, but I don't know. Maybe it's because the other builds don't have the poles. I like to remove them, but yeah. Anyway, okay, so then we need more dummy lifts for snapping our splitters, and then we should be able to climb up and grab a splitter and it's not snapping so that means we have to snap one to the top of our splitters and many people have asked me why don't you just do it this way why don't you just have the belt coming through and snap it to the top of the splitters and i mean it's kind of fun like you can imagine that this is a little thing where the items are coming in through the bottom and some people like that i personally think it looks a little weird it it to me, it just looks like it's clipping straight through the bottom and it's smashed way too far inside. I like when it connects to the outside. So yeah, once you've got these all snapped to the top, then you go ahead and get this to snap properly onto the belt. Some people have reported snapping issues. I do wonder if it's global grid related. If you are not building... Actually, wait, no, this isn't even on the global grid. I just noticed that. So yeah, I, I have no idea. In fact, maybe maybe these blueprints are harder to build if you're on the global grid. I built this little blueprint designing area away from my main base and I forgot to align it to the global grid. So maybe that's part of it. I don't actually know because um, I haven't tested building these on the global grid, I guess. So that could be part of it. It's worth a shot switching it up if things aren't working for you. I will say that. Okay, so now we've got our splitters and just like before, we should be able to get our Mark IV here. And you listen for that click noise. Someone, I, apparently that's a UI noise. Um, if you have UI turned down in the settings, you might not hear this. But that's the important noise to know that it's linked. Another way to know that it's linked, which is funny that I didn't really think about this. When you have a belt ready to be built, you can see these ghost arrows, right? There's those teal arrows. I can even see them on the other side of the building. And then you can see the orange arrows for inputs that aren't connected to things, like the one over here for this belt or the input for this building. I think I just kind of became blind to them because there's so many of them so uh, all over the place when you're building manifolds and stuff. But they do accurately tell you if things are connected or not. So if you build your lift and then you go to build a belt, notice how there's no more arrows up here? That means these are nicely connected to each other. There's no belt disconnections there. So for those who have commented that, yes, that is a helpful tip. I don't really know why I haven't mentioned it. Like I did know that that's true, but I, I think I just became blind to these little arrows uh, most of the time for whatever reason, because I just got so used to seeing them everywhere. So yeah, that's that's the inputs, and then we'll build the outputs here. Two, three. Packagers, it's nice to have compact because you need a lot of them when you're packaging like a whole fluid line. I uh, I almost went with using trucks to move packaged 
crude oil around, but I just needed too many packagers, so I ended up not going with that method, but it is an option if you want to use packagers. All right, we'll climb up here. You know, at this point, I probably could use the jetpack because if we're doing packagers, that means you have <laughs> plastic and rubber and, and you could use jetpack. I am excited to work with the next series with the the uh, manufacturers and such because you will have the jetpack at that point so I can build the jetpack, which will be nice. But yeah, you use the snapping trick as before and then you have to deconstruct these little dummy towers and connect things up and we'll get power going and I guess we'll get rid of the conveyor poles too while we're here alright mark 4 and then again if you want you can just grab a belt and check that there's no floating arrows and we're good to go so now inputs and outputs are hooked up and we'll remove our connections here on the end. Some people have also mentioned that I should remove these. And while that is true, uh, there's a reason I don't that isn't just for looks. And well, two reasons actually. One reason I like to leave these is they make connecting to the first set a little easier. I don't mind having angles of things and a small amount of spaghetti between connections in my base. And when I'm basically getting the inputs and outputs hooked up to these, I like to have these initial connections rather than having things coming in at an angle all the way to the splitter or merger or whatever. And then when you're connecting them to each other, it creates natural uh, conveyor and pipe poles in between each build because these are gone right but those ones are going to appear right here and then that way you have those equally spaced and that allows you to bring in other resources above these by adding more stackable poles on top and i use that a lot in my base so that's one of the reasons i like to to, to leave these in here is that later you know, if you've got a build of eight of these packages in a row, you've already got stackables here. You will then have stackables here, and then you can easily bring extra resources kind of above these resources to go on the other side of it. And that way you kind of have these nice and clean belt stacks. So that's why I do it that way. Um, if you don't want to do it that way, that's fine. If you, Because it will be a little easier to tile them and connect them if you remove these as well. Because then you're just connecting one splitter to the next splitter, pipe to the next pipe, and you're done. Uh, sometimes here, you know, the splitter's too close to this one and you have to, like, remove the belt and rebuild it. So, I understand if you want to do it differently, but that's the reason I do it the way that I do it. And we'll go ahead and get power connected here. So, I, I like to build it, like, in this back left corner, which can be a little uh, finicky. One thing you can do is you can lock it and you can control nudge. Rather than regular nudge, it goes in smaller increments. So I like to build it kind of nestled just in this L here. And you can see it's not clipping with anything. It'll connect nicely. And it'll just connect nicely to the other power poles. Also, some people have mentioned, you know, like, oh, your builds use quick wire because I'm using Power Pole Mark II. If you don't have quick wire, you should get quick wire. I mean, it's really not that hard to go find a Caterium vein. Um, if you don't know how to do it, basically what you do is you you find a Caterium rock somewhere out in the world. And by rock, I just mean like a little rock that you mine with your hands. I can't see any from here, but they're like all around cliffs. It does not take long to find one if you go looking for one. And then once you put some of that Caterium in the MAM, it'll let you scan with the, uh, with the resource scanner thingy. And with the resource scanner, you can scan for Caterium and then just go grab some portable miners and go grab a few thousand Caterium and then you'll have enough to make a bunch of quick wire for Mark II power poles. Um, you don't need to automate, you know, an automated miner and bring the Caterium all the way back to the base on a belt or anything. You can just go grab a few thousand, come back home, and then you're good to go for a while. That'll get you enough Caterium to do some researches, get your power pole Mark IIs, maybe even smart splitters if you're interested. So I highly recommend go and get a Caterium if you don't have it. And this is that clipping I was telling you about. If you don't love it, make the belts go one higher. For whatever reason, this is acceptable to me. Um, I don't mind it. And again, to each their own. If you mind it, that's, that's fine. I do call this the clean series where we reduce clipping. But for some reason, because the stackable poles, I 
they're not there on that side anymore. <laughs> because these stackable poles naturally align this way, to me, it feels right to do it this way, even though there's some clipping. Uh, for me, because the stackables align nicely on top of each other, it still feels like I'm playing the game quote unquote properly. But again, this is very much a preference thing. So you're not wrong if you have different preferences. Uh, just don't try to tell me I'm wrong for having my preferences either. <laughs> that's that's when I that's when I start to get a little feisty in the comments. All right, so that's the build. That is packagers. We'll go ahead and save it as example mark or example packagers x4 mark 4. And you could call it P1 for like pipe 1 versus pipe 2 uh, if you want. Set the directory as examples. Go ahead and select our icon as the packager. And that's going to be it. Um, did I use? Oh, yeah, I was using Mark IV the whole time. The steel beams are used in the production of the packagers, I think. I must have accidentally used a Mark V belt somewhere. So I'm going to go find that real quick. OK, it was this lift here on the end. So there you go. You save your blueprint. All right, let's go over how to connect these. Uh, rather than going in a straight line, I'm gonna connect them in a box form because I think going in a straight line is something you probably already understand how to do. So in this version, it's a little interesting to think about how we wanna connect it because we're gonna be kind of going around on the back with the pipes and such. So because there's a pipe and a belt input on the input and the output, it's not really gonna matter which way we arrange this, whether I, you know, build the outputs towards the middle or the inputs towards the middle. So I, it's just kind of up to whatever particulars you're dealing with in your build. In this case, I'm going to face the outputs towards the middle. And so with this blueprint, I'm going to basically face them to each other in blueprint mode. And then I'm going to lock it with H and then I'm going to nudge it until they're not overlapping. You could leave a space to walk if you want, I will. And now remember, my inputs are coming in here and my outputs are coming out here. And so now we need to connect this blueprint to that one. As far as power, I don't really think you could connect across without having some major clipping difficulties. So you probably just will connect each set of four separately, you know, to your base power, uh, however that works. And then for the inputs here, we need them to come all the way over to here and the outputs we need to connect to each other here. So let's start with the outputs. Uh, it's easy enough with the belt. We can just do straight mode and do that. And then the problem is if we wanted to do this one, it's going to clip straight through the other belt, right? So you need to bring this one out a little bit further and you're going to do the same with the pipe. So I'm going to go uh, two tiles here or with a gap of one, I should say. And then that should give me enough here. And you can always rebuild this into a single section stretching from the splitter to here if you want, because then you won't have to upgrade it in two sections later. Um, that is something that can get pretty annoying if you're not careful. So I do recommend having less belt sections later, but you can see these are nicely next to each other. And then for the pipe, there is no straight mode. So I do recommend building another stackable support um, here so that when the pipe comes over, it'll be in a nice angle. And then again, we're going to have to come out a little further with a stackable here so that it'll connect to that pipe over there. So let's go ahead and see if the pipes connect nicely here. And I'm on horizontal to vertical, so that has a little bit better angles. If you're in noodle mode, it'll do weird things at distances like this at least. And that should leave a nice gap here, perfect. And then we're all connected up. And that is how to connect your packagers. And with that, we reach the end of our compact, clean, and tileable early game series. Next will be the mid game series using the Blueprint Designer Mark II for things like manufacturers, blenders, uh, fuel generators, and maybe a couple other things. And many of you have also asked for an example on how to put this all together. You know, I've shown you how to make these blueprints, but how do you actually use them in a base? So in, a, in the next video, we will be going over kind of what my early game section looks like where I used all of these blueprints, I guess, except for the packagers one. 
I used all of these blueprints with my bus based base. Obviously your implementation will look different, but at least that way you guys can see an example of what it looks like and kind of how I've used it. So I will be doing that in the next video. And then after that will be the mid game series with the blueprint designer Mark II. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments as usual, and I'll see you all in the next video.